Hey, it's AW, and we back today, guys. And I'm back to real soon to clear up uh, the Goku vs. Atama debate. But before I dive into that, I have to address some of the comments on some of my videos. First, please keep the comments about power scaling. If you find yourself constantly berating someone, then more than likely you don't have an argument that beats that person. Also, this uh, Goku solos your verse, or Saitama solos your verse, or they one shot your verse. Uh, this is trash. That is trash power scaling. Uh, saying Goku solos your verse, trash power scaling. Uh, and normally, comments like those are from super amateur power scalers. You're a super amateur. If all you say is Goku solos your verse, you don't quote any scans, you don't quote any manga pages, you don't quote anything um, canonized such as the Daisen Shu. Uh, you're just saying Goku solos your verse because Goku is your favorite character. Terrible power scaling. And then and actually, I won't even address you or listen to you. Um, but I am going to say this. If your comments get too inappropriate or start to lean away from the intelligent power scaling that I am trying to present on this channel i'm gonna have to delete it so now that we got that out the way let's dive into the topic at hand uh understanding that neither of these characters can be one shotted by the other is the first step in analyzing which of these two characters would defeat the other when discussing goku versus saitama we have to discuss saitama and goku's physiology as most of you know i keep my scaling simple and to the point when we dive into the five pillars of scaling or the five categories, we start with speed. In terms of speed, we have to give it to Goku as Goku is capable of teleportation via instant transmission and zero lost on real time. Goku is much faster than light and capable of transversing his universe in zero time loss, proving he has infinite speed but not immeasurable speed. Of course, Goku needs to lock on to the individual's key but nevertheless, he's still extremely fast. In terms of Saitama, Saitama is supersonic plus. It takes 1.3 seconds for light to reach from the moon to the planet Earth. If you analyze this feat when Saitama jumped from the moon to the planet Earth, it took him a little longer than 1.3 seconds. For those that are considering his time travel technique, he learned from uh, that from Garu. Please understand that that is an outlier, not a consistent feat. For those trying to compare Saitama to other characters such as Flashy Flash, sadly he isn't light speed. Flashy Flash is not light speed. He can be equated to Shus Shusui of the Leech Village in Naruto, as Shusui also could utilize after images of himself, utilizing the body flicker technique. Flashy Flash may be the second fastest character in the One Punch Man verse. See, many of you are hung up on Flashy Flash. Flashy Flash. Many of you are hung up on Flashy Flash's English translation. When One Punch Man manga first came out, it is stated that the English translation translated Flashy Flash as Lightspeed Flash. But if you would notice, as the story progressed, the writers and one stopped using that translation. Uh, for flashy flash as it was more appropriate for the scaling and cosmology to make sure that he is not light speed remember scalers if you check out my last video you'll realize that even after breaking the sound barrier there are multiple levels of speed levels to be reached before light speed the difference between supersonic plus and light speed is leagues um, in differences uh, we're talking about two different speeds, two different categories of speeds. When we jump down uh, to durability, and, and th the thing that we have to understand is when we jump down to durability and we're speaking about Saitama, it's obviously Saitama that wins in the durability category. For those stating that Saiyan physiology is beyond Saitama's, I'm not sure if you're actually watching the Dragon Ball manga or reading one punch man at all their fighting styles prove saitama is a more durable character than goku goku usually utilizes high speed movements to defeat his opponents 
Unlike Saitama, Goku rarely defeats a high-level opponent with his fist. Saitama tanks punches from multi multi-galactic threats, and the fact that Saitama allows his opponent to attack him first proves his durability far outweighs Goku by a mile. Saitama's fighting style is a reactionary one. Saitama has survived the vacuum of space. Unlike Goku who couldn't help the King of Kai's defeat Moro or fight Moro, Saitama can hold his breath in space for longer periods of time. He is also capable of surviving high level energy blasts as he was able to withstand Boro's energy blasts as well. We have to conclude that Saitama was able to survive Cosmic Garo's radiation while in a different timeline Goku died from an unknown illness within the Dragon Ball verse. So understand that Saitama is surviving radioactive high levels of radioactiveness high levels of, of destruction he's surviving lava baths and not being um, injured we have to understand that Goku can catch a disease and he can die he has caught a disease and he has died the fact that Saitama is able to be around fear awakening cosmic Garu while the other humans are dying from radiation proves that Saitama's physiology is well beyond a Saiyan's physiology. Saitama did not become ill from that radiation, he did not become sick, and he did not die. You know, and we also have to consider, and I know a lot of you, a lot of you Goku fans are going to hate this, but Sorbet, with a well-placed beam, basically struck Goku's vitals and nearly killed him. Thus proving any further that Saitama doesn't have to worry about those type of attacks. Saitama easily wins in durability. Saitama's vitals are protected by his high level of durability. And due to Saitama's reactionary fighting style, it is apparent, it is apparent that he is not afraid of taking attacks. While Goku uses high speed movement to dodge attacks and make sure he is not damaged as much and he also uses us a lot of energy projection which we'll get into later on down the video but for now we have Goku winning in the speed category and we also have Saitama winning in the durability now when we jump down to physical strength Saitama of course wins again Saitama is one of the most physically strongest characters in manga and for those who don't who disagree with me you're a fool and an amateur power scaler uh, when we look at Goku, he is also very strong as well, but he isn't even the most physically strongest character in the Dragon Ball verse, in the most physically strongest Saiyan in the in the Dragon Ball verse, as that is given to Broly, as Broly has shown multiple times that he is physically stronger than Goku and Vegeta combined. So understand that for those that are trying to make the argument that Goku is physically stronger than Saitama, how can Goku be physically stronger than Saitama and he's not even the most physically strongest uh, Saiyan within his verse? Saitama is so strong that him clashing with his own power destroyed multiple galaxies. Remember, uh, Power Scarlet, Garo was replicating Saitama's power and fighting style. Saitama, unlike Goku, has defeated and destroyed high-level opponents using nothing but his fist and high-level durability. Goku is not physically stronger than Saitama, nor is he physically stronger than Broly. For those that want to discuss the shaking of Universe 7, first and foremost, this is an assisted feat. And please understand that Beerus was a universe buster before meeting Goku, meaning Goku was the weaker of the two. Also meaning that Beerus, if he wanted to, could have destroyed Goku and the entire universe by himself. Saitama was the strongest when Garu and him fought. And at the end of their battle, Saitama had achieved an even greater level than when he started. At the start of him and Garu's battle, he was already a multi-galactical level threat. Saitama is much stronger physically than Goku, as Saitama has the strength to possibly outbeat Broly himself, who is the most physically strongest Saiyan in all of the verse of Dragon Ball. 
Saitama's strength and durability is multi-galactical level and possibly low universal level. While Goku's only comes out as a, a solar system level strength. And the reason I say he only comes out as a solar system level strength is due to the fact that he is unable to beat Broly physically. And due to Broly being stronger than him physically, it can be concluded that even though uh, Goku clashed with Beerus, a clash with Broly would have also caused the same level of destruction for the universe, possibly even higher. So as far as I'm concerned, most of the destruction caused was through Beerus in that clash. So now when we get down to energy projection, we have to give it to Goku as Goku is able to easily produce large amounts of key energy for offensive or possibly defensive scenarios. Goku's energy projection is multi-galactic as Goku's Kamehameha can easily destroy planets and multiple solar systems. Goku's energy projection and speed is his greatest weapon as Goku utilizes his instant transmission with energy blast to dispatch his opponents. Even when Goku defeated Buu and Frieza in the end, he utilizes his high energy projection to defeat them, proving Goku's energy projection exceeds Saitama's energy projection. Goku has extremely high energy projection. Goku utilizes his energy projection on more than one occasion, even when his clash with Beerus. I know a lot of people were looking at Goku and Beerus' fist, but even with his clash with Beerus, you didn't start seeing planets and other solar systems being destroyed until Goku and Beerus clash with their key output. When they clash with their key output, that is when a lot of the universe was being destroyed. So understanding that Goku is, is superior than Saitama in energy projection. So we have to give the energy projection to Goku. Uh, I've seen on many occasions Goku defeat opponents using high level energy projection. While Saitama doesn't really have many energy projection uh, techniques, I do know his punches can cause uh, shock waves. But I still think the Kamehame wave is superior to those shock wave punches. Now, when we dive into hacks, the one thing that needs to be kept in perspective is that neither of these characters have very powerful hacks techniques. They do not possess many techniques that affect them or their opponent that ignores durability or enhances their durability. If one wants to bring up the Mafuba, sure, but understand that Goku risks death attempting to seal a being as powerful as Saitama in the Mafuba. The Mafuba is has always been and has always been talked about as a double-edged sword. Now a lot of people want to bring up well Roshi used it. Frost was able to to uh, reflect Roshi's Mafuba and determine the power. Let's understand two things. First of all, Roshi had already been fighting, so Roshi was very tired. Understand that. Understand also that Roshi had already used the Mafuba twice. He had already used this very powerful technique twice, and understand that Roshi is not a Saiyan. So of course, yes, Frost was able to deflect Roshi's Mafuba, but we're not talking about Frost or Roshi. We're talking about Saitama. Saitama is much stronger than Frost and Roshi, so please don't act like Goku is going to Mafuba Saitama. He's not going to Mafuba Saitama, and even if he does Mafuba Saitama, as stated within the Dragon Ball lore, Goku has the possibility of dying in an attempt at sealing Saitama. So I doubt that he would bring up and just seal Saitama in a Mafuba when he could possibly die due to Saitama being a multi-galactic threat or a low universal threat at that. This means we have to dive much further into Saitama's and Goku's physiology to understand who would come out on top. First of all, this is why many of you Goku fans, not all, but many of you have no clue what you're talking about. Let me give you guys another history lesson on Dragon Ball. It was already determined back in Dragon Ball Z uh, by Vegeta uh, that Saiyans became stronger when they were near death and that they survived. This was established back when Raditz had invaded the planet Earth and when he came to the planet Earth. This is why many of you amateur power scalers want to disregard the Dyson Shu and the history of Dragon Ball. It's because you don't have a clue or you're just too ignorant to accept the canonized truths. So the key statement is Saiyans become stronger 
if they survive the life or death battle Saiyans don't always magic surpass their limits. The Saiyans in the Tournament of Power that were not from Universe 7 only ascended because Goku and Vegeta were guiding Kaba and Kefla to a new level. But in most cases, Saiyans have to be put on the brink of death to truly ascend to another level. Saitama not so much. Saitama is clearly able to become stronger or evolutionize without being helped or without being placed at the brink of death. If Goku is unable to end the fight quickly with Saitama. Because Saitama has shown the ability to exponentially grow and become stronger during battle. Goku will be unable to defeat Saitama. In terms of who win the battle. I'm going to have to give it to Saitama. And we have to give it to Saitama due to his physiology and the fact that he is his physiology and the fact that he is able to evolutionize during battle during his cosmic during his battle with uh, fear awakening cosmic Garo, Saitama was becoming stronger Garo realized this he realized oh my god as I'm fighting this guy he's becoming even stronger yes certain opponents of Goku have noticed that Goku does start to become stronger as they fight him and so his evolution, Goku's evolution, is very powerful. The Saiyan physiology is very powerful. But let's not forget canonized rules within the Dragon Ball verse. And the canonized rule within the Dragon Ball verse is for a Saiyan to ascend to an even greater level, he must be placed in a situation where he feels like he's going to die. This is canonized. If anyone tries to, anyone tries to kind of mull over this fact you are amateur power scale Saitama does not need to be put on the brink of death to become stronger and this is why if in the end he is stronger than Goku and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below this is AW and I'm out